I am me again, my ugly mutt, and more talk from me. Another unboxing video today, and uh, this is going to be it for a couple of days, I think. I think I might spend the weekend, actually, because today is Friday, Friday the 7th of May, and I think I may spend the weekend cleaning the garage up, because as you can see, all around me is just clutter and crap. And I've probably most of the stuff I've got in here, half of it I could just get rid of. So um, I think that's what I might do this weekend. So anyway, unboxing video for you today, and this is going to be all about output flanges, which are these things here. These are the bits that bolt onto the outside of your they bolt onto the outside of your um, hubs. You've got a rubber cap over the end on a standard Land Rover Defender. You've got a rubber cap over the end. Your shaft comes through, and you've got a couple of circlips which just locate the shaft in its floating position. So on the back, you just have a circlip, and on the front, you have shims. And you have to correctly shim it to make sure that you get the um, the correct end flow on the uh, on the CV joint because you don't want the CV joint going back in and um, and touching the back of the swivel ball because that will cause wear and damage and shards of metal and everything. And you don't want it pressed too hard up against the phosphor bronze bush on the back of the spindle. So a little bit of end flow on there with the uh, with the shafts. Now the biggest problem with these. Um, the best thing about them is they cost peanuts. You can get these for about three or four pounds, I think. But if they're making this for three or four pounds, you have to consider the quality, uh, and they're probably not very good. Problem with the standard Land Rovers, certainly Puma, I don't know about TD5s, somebody in the factory had the great idea of assembling it with no grease. So actually, when I took my rubber caps off of here, all in here was rusty, which you'll find on your Puma if you've got one, probably. And then when I actually took these off, you've got the big knot on the back which holds the bearing in. That was all rusty as well. There was no grease in this area whatsoever. The first grease was actually around the, the wheel bearings. So they don't put any grease in here. They don't pack anything in there. They don't lubricate it whatsoever. So it's all just dry. It rusts. Of course, if you've got corrosion, you get an increase of tolerance. So you're getting wear. And then you've got the rust powder itself, which is acting like a grinding paste. And it's just all grinding together. And because the shafts can float in and out, they, they will actually just rub themselves away. And the thing to do is catch it quickly when you've got some play. And hopefully, because these are monkey metal and the shafts are pretty strong or hard, then you'll probably just have the wear in these and your shafts will be okay. So um, let's get to the bench. I'll show you the wear I've got on these and then we'll get these unboxed. These are the Ashcroft ones. And we'll see what they look like on the same shaft. So as you can see, I haven't opened them yet. So forget the Ashcroft ones and they've got loads of play as well then. I guess I need to get some Ashcroft shafts. <laughs> More money. Okay, so here you can see I've got my shaft in the vise. Okay, this is the shorter of the two shafts from the rear axle. And this is the outer end where the um, where the actual um, flange goes. And you can see we've got a groove there for the circlip. So when you look inside here, as I said, if you look in here close up, you can see that it's all dry. I mean, I've cleaned them off and everything. Um, but this was all rusty in here, but you can see it's very dry. And as you can see, with just a little bit of road use, and you can see there's a lot of play on there. You can see the shaft is actually held solid in the vise, so it's all the movement you can see there is actually in the, in the in the flange itself. Now, if we pull it forward, this end of the spline hasn't been used at all because this would have been on the outside of the circlip. So if we feel it tighter there, then it's not. So that means that with any luck, that means my shafts aren't worn to any level and it's all the um the flange that's on which will be a good thing hopefully because this should be a lot softer than that shaft so this is my answer is to get the ashcroft ones okay so just start raining again which is great so basically you've got the box here this is ashcroft uh, part number 859 if you go and have a look on their website uh, it's on the end of here it's uh, ashcroft-transmissions.co.uk you can see that on there with the blue tape in the way. So there's all their contact details there. And these are around about £95 a pair. Now, while I cut this tape off, I can hear you all going, that's a lot. You know, you can get the, the Brit Park ones and the Bear Mac ones and the all the various different ones, um, which I haven't got. But when I looked at the price of them, you get back to this kind of situation and I think you know would I want to make that for that sort of money and it'd be a good product and the fact of the matter is you probably can't do it and I went and looked at some videos some installation videos and I saw one video where the, the bolt pattern um, 
was around here and and one of them was like five degrees out so you couldn't even fit it to the Land Rover anyway so you kind of think you know the quality and everything so I thought I'll just spend the extra money and get the Ashcroft ones because judging by the rest of their products they're going to be pretty good one other little thing I just wanted to talk about as I'm an engineer from an engineering point of view I've seen these sold with with bolts uh, I'm not sure if the Ashcroft ones come with bolts or not I haven't even opened the box but um, these are the original bolts that Land Rover fit okay and you can see this is actually a bolt okay and a bolt is determined by not the hex head it's the fact that it's got a shoulder here and then it's threaded so you've got this plain area here so that when this is bolted on the actual plain area is sat inside here okay so the actual torque that's going through this and turning it is working against a plain diameter rather than a thread now this is what's known as an allen screw or a, uh, um, a socket head cap screw okay so you can see this one has got the thread come on focus camera you can see this one's got the thread all the way up and if you use a bolt like this or a, a screw like this i should say then what will happen is you'll actually be passing your torque through the threaded part um, ignore that that's where i've put a tap through because i used it for something else but basically you've got a smooth diameter in there okay and you want that to be acting upon a smooth diameter on the bolt so by all means use allen bolts socket heads cap screws or whatever but make sure you they are a bolt and not a screw um the other thing i get concerned about is using allen bolts is if they get all full of muck and crud and rust it's quite a job to clean them all out and make sure they're all cleaned out and not round them off when you try and undo them and everything. It's much easier to deal with a bolt, just wire brush it off and undo it. So, you know, um, that's a consideration as well. Now, I'm going to move this camera because I realise I've got it on the bench and every time I <laughs> move, move something, it shakes the camera. So I'm just going to move the camera and then I'll be straight back. Okay, this should be a lot better now. So we've got we moved to the other side to get this old stuff out of the way. So let's have a look what's in the box again. Lovely packaging from Ashcroft, very careful, um, very carefully packed. So first of all, you can see we got a nice new pair of paper gaskets there, which is a nice touch. So uh, glad to see we got them. Drop a Hylamar on them to uh, to get them to seal properly, so we can put them there. And then in here we have got our beautifully made all the polystyrene off our beautifully made flanges. And as you can see, everything's all beautifully drilled it's lovely plating on there we've got a cap which screws on which feels like a pre-greased thread uh, we've got an o-ring in there to seal and keep all the water and muck and crap out and then when we assemble it we can put a good old handful of grease in there get some in the back as well so it's got some spare and then we can put that cap on nip it up with a spanner and we're good to go and everything's nice and sealed much better than the standard rubber cap you get with these so um there we go, as you can see, they're all beautifully turned and uh, milled profile around the outside. And uh, yeah, very nice job indeed. And I wish I had a hardness tester because I would like to test the hardness of them. Because I hear you buy these once and that's it. Um, I know that um, Damien's got them over at uh, Defender 90 Orkney, Defender Orkney 90, whatever it is. Uh, his channel, one of the best off-roading Land Rover channels I think there is for watching off-roaders. Um, and yeah, he's, he certainly had no issues with his, so, and his, his get a hell of a hard time. Um, in fact, his, his Land Rover is like a driving advert for Ashcroft. But um, anyway, so what we'll do, we're going to move the camera over to the shaft, which is in the vice, and then we're going to do a, a comparison. Oh, I also forgot to say, we're getting new Sir Clips, okay? And as you can see, this is something I've talked about in a lot of my videos. When you look at these Sir Clips, you can see that one edge is sharp, okay and one edge is radius so if you can see that this edge is radius and this edge is sharp and you need to make sure when you use them the way direction of force with these it doesn't really matter because there's no force but if this was holding a bearing onto a shaft you would make sure that the square edge is in the groove in the direction the bearing wants to come off okay so always a good tip so this is obviously new new circlips to go on the end of our shafts, which is a nice touch. So I wasn't expecting that. I can't see any bolts in here. Uh, obviously we've got they come in pairs. So there's the other two there with the foam bits all over them. I know there are no bolts. So you're obviously expected to use your own bolts or or get some new ones or whatever. I will probably get some new ones 
um, and I may, even though I said about the cop so uh, socket cap screws, I may well get, I'm going to put these away for you to test them, um, I may well get them for mine, um, purely because these bolts just to rust and suck it, uh, black cap screws tend to not rust, so I don't know. I don't think you can get stainless ones that are going to be up to the job, but uh, we shall see. Um, so, one other thing, if you are going to get some of these and fit them to your land over, when you take these bolts out, they've got, you can see this one, it's got thread lock all the way down it. Ignore that white bit, that's something else. And when I took these out, one of them actually snapped. So don't get in there with your impact gun, giving it woo, 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 trying to pull them out. Get a nice long breaker bar, break them, turn them out. <clears throat> and when you actually undo them, if they are really tight to come out, you want, I'm not talking about tightly done up, I'm talking about once they move. If they really are tight, don't just keep winding out. Go backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. So it's two steps forwards, three steps back, two steps forwards, three steps back. And just wind them out of that, get a bit of heat on them perhaps. And just make sure that you're not going to snap them off. I actually managed to snap one of mine off, even though I was being really careful. And I had to drill and tap it in the end. And it was it was quite easy because I had it on the bench. But doing it on the vehicle, I'm not sure that would have been quite so easy. And that's why you can see that thread mark, those thread marks in that one. Because I used this as a guide to make sure the tap was square. So, right. Um, I digress. Let's get these and see what they look like on the, um, on the shaft. All right, so just to remind ourselves, this is the original, this goes on. And we can see it's got loads of play. That's 16,000 <clears> pretty much road miles. And um, I was chatting to Gwyn this morning on the phone and I was saying to him, my Land Rover's done 16,000 miles and probably 14,000 miles of that has been like high speed, I say high speed, high speed for a Defender motorway and A-road driving. So up and down the gearbox, you know, overtaking and stuff like that so probably you know 14 maybe 14 and a half thousand miles of that 16,000 miles has been in sixth gear fifth gear you know over 50 miles an hour so basically that's a, a that's an idea of, of the sort of where you're going to get without doing a lot of off-roading or you know giving it a hard time so if you have been doing towing if you go off-road a lot if you've been doing lots of green laning and stuff I really would check them because at the end of the day once these wear out what will happen is that all the rust builds up and it starts to wear out your shafts. You need to replace your shafts. So I haven't tried this on here, but I'm I'm convinced that my shafts are going to be okay. So hopefully this is going to be a lovely snug fit. So let's just try it on there. I've got the camera in my way. Oh my God, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. I can't even get it all the way on. So that is absolutely solid. So if we give it a little tap, it should go on quite easily. Wow. That's what you want now they are on there and there is no play in there whatsoever as you can see i'm going to have to hit them off so that is exactly what we want so we're going to get these on we're going to grease them up um and we're going to you know get some grease around here make sure this is all nicely sealed up and then get some new bolts make sure we use the gaskets which are supplied with it you've got the gaskets here as i just showed you you've got the gaskets there and um, we'll get some hylamar on there some hylamar blue and uh, we'll be good to go, get all the bolts all torqued up all in a radial pattern done evenly and uh, they're going to be lovely and we can see how good these things look. There's the cap going to go on there. So if you can imagine that on your hub, we'll see, in fact what I'll do, I've got my Land Rover so what I'll do is I'll show you how they look fitted with, with a couple of old bolts and um, we can compare them to how the, uh, how the originals look. Not that what they look like really matters but uh, it's nice to have something pretty, isn't it? Bit of bling. Okay, so there's the original you can see on there. I've got no bolts in there. This is in the front wheel. That's the rubber cap you've got on there. If you go look at your Defender, you'll see exactly the same. You can see this one's got a little bit of play on it, but it's nothing like as bad as the rear ones were for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but uh, my two front ones weren't as bad as the rear. So there you can see this one's fitted in loose. I haven't got any bolts in there because I've got the ATB diff. And we're rolling this chassis around while I'm building it. Obviously, it's going to be fighting me whenever I put the steering lock on. So we've just got these fitted loosely. This gets all put away. And this, this is fitted loosely um, so that it can turn freely in there and allow me to roll it around without me fighting the ATB all the time. So, um, so there we go. That's how that fits on there. You can see we've got the rubber cap. And it's all rusty and everything. and all dry as a bone inside again. You can see this one's got nothing in it. Um, and here you can see where I've built it. This is how what I found after Land Rover had built theirs. 
we built this at the factory and um, basically all this in here wasn't greased at all this was all dry as a bone and just so you know I'm not bullshitting you here's one of the nuts that came off and you can see that's pretty rusty pretty cruddy and dry as a bone to be like that so how does it look with the Ashcroft one on there I think we'll agree that looks a lot better yeah let me just get it so the bolt holes sort of line up there we go so again, this is gonna to have to be tapped on, but this one I won't tap it on because I'll damage the CV joint. So what I'll do is you've got a thread in the end of there. What I'll do is I'll pull the, um, pull the shaft into it. But um, there we go, you can see how they look. So uh, there's your Ashcroft ones compared to uh, the horrible, grubby, rusty, dry, cheap, nasty standard ones. So there you are. So if you want a set of these, you know and you're tempted by some of the cheaper ones just think about the quality first you know if if these things are being sold if they're 35 pound a pair or something you know you've got to machine this from some steel so you've got to buy the steel then you've got all the machining time and all your tooling costs and then it's got to be properly hardened and everything and plated you know it's going to be um pretty difficult to do all that properly for 35 quid a pair i think so that's why i've gone for these and I think you should too. That's the uh, Ashcroft part number 859, and that's their um, set of uh, heavy duty dry flanges for defenders and everything. If you have got a Discovery, you can use these on the front, but I believe Discoveries have a one piece rear half shaft. So this is actually made as part of the half shaft. I believe there's thick and thin ones as well. I'm sure you can tell me in the comments. Um, and I think there's a Brit part upgrade shaft you can get as well, which is a one piece, but uh, I don't think they're as strong as the Ashcroft ones. I'm not sure. Again, tell me in the comments below. Tell me what you think. It isn't, you know, the most expensive items aren't always the best, but I do believe Ashcroft have got a name um, that they live by and they have to uh, protect. So I believe their products to be of superior quality in uh, all respects. And that's certainly what I've found. Um, I'm under no obligation to promote Ashcroft's products. Um, I'm not supplied these for free or anything. I buy them. Uh, with my own hard-earned, well, not my own hard-earned money, earned in the past because I don't work at the moment. But um, there we go. So uh, so that's them. That's the Ashcroft uh, flanges. Beautiful piece of kit. Beautiful bit of machining. Really, really impressed with the quality. And, you know, for £95 a pair, yep, they're not the cheapest, but uh, they certainly are very good quality. So um, I think we'll call that a day, guys. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get this garage cleared up now.